All right, everybody, let's see how you did on the prime factorization and greatest common factor, the homework that you had last night. Remember the couple tricks that we learned in class. There's three of them for GCF. And if you do them, you could save yourself a lot of time in doing these problems. Okay, so let's look at the first trick. Number one, you want to ask yourself, does the smaller number go into the larger number evenly? If so, that smaller number is the GCF. Okay, if that didn't work, what you want to do is cut the smaller number in half and then ask yourself, does that go into the larger number? And if it does, that's the GCF. And if that didn't work, try subtracting the two numbers. <clears throat> and if that works, if that goes in the larger number, then that is the GCF. Okay, so we're going to be looking at those tricks for all these problems um, to kind of speed up the process. So let's look at question number one. We're looking for the GCF, the greatest factor that 36, or sorry, that 39 and 6 both have in common. And we're going to look at those tricks right there. Okay, so number one, does the smaller number 6 go into 39? The answer is no. So I'm going to cut the smaller number in half, right, which is 3. Does 3 go into 39? And the answer is yes. So that means that 3 would have to be the GCF. Okay, number 2. Does 24 go into 28? Does the smaller go into the larger? No. If I cut the smaller number in half, I get 12. Does that go into 28? No. So if I subtract the 2, what do I get? I get 4. Does 4 go into 24? Yes. And does 4 go into 28? Yes. That is the GCF. Okay, so that saves us a lot of time. Uh, number three, does 10 go into 40? Yeah, there we go. It worked right on step one. So the answer is 10. All right, here we go. 30 and 39. Does 30 go into 39? No. Cut it in half. 15. Does 15 go into 39? No. And if I subtract the two, I get nine. So that doesn't work either. So when it comes down to it, we might just have to do it. All right. Rather than list all the factors out, I'm going to use the slide method. I'm going to say, give me one number that goes into both 30 and 39. And in this case, it would be three. Three goes into 30 10 times and three goes into 39 13 times. And that is the only number because no other number besides one goes into 10 and 13. So your GCF is three. Now let's look at the variables. Do they have a V in common? The answer is yes, they do. Do they have a U in common? The answer is no. So your GCF would be 3V. Okay, very good. All right, let's look at question number five. We're going to go through the steps again, and we're going to ask ourselves, does the smaller number go into the larger number evenly? 21 doesn't go into 35. And it says cut the smaller number in half. I can't cut an odd number in half, okay? Uh, I can, but I'm going to get a half, and I don't want that. And if I subtract the two numbers here, I get 14, and 14 doesn't go into both. So again, I'm going to do the slide. I'm going to write 21 and 35, and I'm going to say, what number goes into both 21 and 35? And it is 7. 7 goes into both 3 and 5 times, and nothing goes into 3 and 5 besides 1, so I am done. The GCF is 7. Now I'm going to look at my variables. My variables, how many n's do I have in common? Well, over here, I've got two n's, and over here, I have one. So we share one in common. So 7n. Now I'm going to go on to the letter m. How many m's do we share in common? Well, over here, I have one. Over here, I have two. So we share one in common. So your answer is 7nm. You could reverse that and say 7mn. Whatever way you want to, it's the correct answer. All right, and try to put the coefficient in front. Okay, next one. Does the smaller number go in the larger? Does 20 go into 30? No. Cut it in, or sorry. Yeah, cut it in half, right? So cut 20 in half. Um, whoop, I'm working ahead of myself here. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Does 10 go into 30? The answer is yes. So the numerical value of the GCF is 10. Now, how many Y's do I have in common? I've got two Y's in common, right? This one has two, this one has three. So I've got two that they share in common. So that's how you do GCF with variables and using the tricks to save yourself some time. Now we're going to move on to the prime factorization, right? So I could do the tree method or the slide. I'm going to choose to do the slide, okay? So I'm going to say, what prime number goes into 65? I'm going to say 5. 5 goes into 6 once with one left over. 5 goes into 15 three times. And 13 is prime, so I'm done. The answer would be 5 times 13. Number 8, 81. <clears throat> 2 can't go into it because it's odd, right? So I check 3, and 3 definitely can because 8 plus 1 is 9, and that's the rule. Does 3 go into the sum? And the answer is yes. So 3 goes into 81, 
two times with two left over, and three goes to 21 seven times. Three can go into 27 three times, or three goes into 27, uh, let's see, nine times, and three can go into nine three times. So check that out. I've got three, 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 three. I've got four threes, so my answer is three to the fourth power. 80, let's break down 80. Very tempting to want to put a 10 on the outside, but 10 is not prime. So I'm going to use 2. Half of that is 40. I'm going to use 2 again, 20. 2 again, 10. 2 again, and 5. So it looks like my answer is how many 2s? 1, 2, 3, 4. 2 to the 4th power times 5. And again, if I wanted to check it, I could multiply it out. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, and 16 times 5, I just want to double check, especially if it's a quiz or test, right? And you do get 80, the thing that you started with. So that looks good. All right, 54. Let's break down 54. Okay, 54. 2 goes into it. Uh, 2 goes into 5 twice with 1 left over. 2 goes into 14 7 times. Okay, that's called short division. I make it a little quicker. 3 goes into 27 nine times, and then 3 goes into 9 three times, and you wind up getting 2 times, again, 3 times 3 times 3. That's expanded form, but if I want to write it in exponential form, and I just realized I might be behind myself here, that's going to be 1, 2, and 3 threes. So 2 times 3 to the third. All right, we got two more problems left, and then we're done. We got the big ones, 972. So let's look at it, 972. I know two can go into it. Two goes into nine four times with one left over. Two goes into 17 eight times with one left over. And then two goes into 12 six times. So now we got to start the process over again. Two goes into four twice. Two goes into eight four times. And two goes into six three times. So 243. And at this point, you might say, looks prime, right? But it is not because when I do my sum of the digits, I get two plus four plus three is nine. That lets me know that three still works. 3 goes into 24 eight times, and 3 goes into 3 once. And now look at 81. The sum is still 9, so let's do it. 3 goes into 8 how many times? Well, 3 goes into 8 twice with 2 left over. 3 goes into 21 seven times. 3 goes into 27, we know that, 9 times. And 3 goes into 9 three times. So look at this long problem. I've got two to the second power. I've got two twos. And I've got how many threes? One, two, three, four, five. That's times three to the fifth power, right? So that is my uh, that is my prime factorization of 972. Okay, 660. Last one. Woohoo. Two goes into six three times, two goes into six three times, and two goes into zero, zero times. Do it again. Cut it in half. Okay, I'm going to say 2 goes into 3 once with 1 left over, 2 goes into 13 6 times with 1 left over, and 2 goes into 10 5 times. At this point, I can't use 2 anymore, so I'm going to use 3 or 5. I like 5. 5 is a little easier. 5 goes into 16 3 times with 1 left over, and 5 goes into 15 3 times. And now I see, hey, check it out. 3 goes into that 11 times. So here it is, and I'm going to try to put them in order by the bases. I've got two twos, I've got one three, I've got one five, and I've got one eleven. And that looks like it is my prime factorization of 660. And if it was a quiz or test, I'd multiply that all out and make sure that I do get 660 to make sure I'm correct. All right, so hopefully we're getting better at prime factorization and greatest common factor. Try to memorize those three tricks for greatest common factor and you'll save yourself a lot of time. Okay, good job, guys.